Welcome again. Um, as you probably know by now, our pastor is on vacation with his family, a long, well-deserved one for uh, Pastor Judah and uh, Carrie and their kids. So he had asked me to come and uh, share a little bit with you. Now, last time that I shared, I know I had a couple crazy things going on in my life with uh, a car thing. But um, since then, praise God, I've gotten a truck. The Lord blessed me with a truck so I can help people. So <laughs> let my wife know if you need my truck. Um, and uh, since then, something else that's happened this is I became a grandfather again for the third time. <laughs> Amazing. My daughter Tamara and her husband Matt uh, had a son last Sunday, right? Nine pounds, three ounces. Unbelievable, and he's such a blessing. So I just wanted to share that because I couldn't keep it anymore. Now, we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be, car be carrying on with supernatural power. But before I get into it, do you guys mind if I go off script a little bit? All right. Um, as I was sitting there, the Lord kind of impressed on me that, you know, fear is a liar. Fear tries to steal our victory. Fear tries to just keep us in one place in our lives. And I don't know who this is for or if it's just for me, but for some reason I feel I have to share this, is, is that we're learning about supernatural power. And the thing that we're really bringing, bringing to, to everybody is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and the supernatural power that we are empowered with through God when we're saved and with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Another name of the Holy Spirit is the Comforter. Now, you know, the Bible says that true love casts out all fear. And the biggest weapon that the enemy has against us who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is fear. So anyone out there right now who's struggling with fear, fear of things to come in the near future, things that have happened in the past, and things that are happening right now, Grab the hand of the comforter today. He's there for you. As we look into the scriptures, Lord, I just come against that spirit of fear right now, Lord, and I just pray that you would just cast it out in the name of Jesus, and Lord, that your word would go forth and that people would hear it, Lord, and the ones that need to be built up, to be held up, Lord, and to just be in your arms, Lord, that they would feel your presence right now. And I ask it in your son Jesus' name. So we're looking at the supernatural power, and we're going to be looking at the fruit of the Spirit today. We live in a supernatural world. Things around us aren't always as they seem. Ephesians 6.12 says that, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. We are in such a spiritual battle that many of us, especially if you're new to the Lord and you're new in this way and following Jesus Christ, that we can't even believe the principalities and powers that are fighting over the souls of those for eternity. And when we think of supernatural power, what are the first things that come to our mind? Everything on TV bombards us. We first think of, maybe we think of, uh, you know, psychics or palm readers. Or maybe we think of, you know, things of the occult. Maybe vampires. There's a lot of that on TV today. Maybe it's, hey, Team uh, Edward and Team Jacob. You know, maybe, you know, when we think about supernatural power, we think of that. Wow, which side's... Which side's going to win, you know? Um, you know, maybe Harry Potter comes to mind, you know, and wizardry that's so big out there. But the thing that we usually don't think about when, we, when people start talking about supernatural power is God. God is supernatural. The Bible says that he's spirit. And God is all-powerful. He's created all things. John 4.24 says, For God is spirit, so those who worship him 
must worship it in, in spirit. And, you know, God enable us, enables us to do that through the Holy Ghost, which we receive right when we start on our journey, when we accept Christ as our Savior. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost comes in and stays with us and dwells with us. 2 Corinthians 1.21 says, It is God who enables us to do these things, along with you, to stand firm for Christ. He's commissioned us, and he has identified us as his own by placing his Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised us. Now see, the Holy Spirit, and I'm sure most of us are aware of this, maybe some aren't. The Holy Spirit isn't a force like some people might think, like a force going forward, a power of God that he sends forth. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is one of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three that bear witness to things. And the Holy Spirit always points you to Jesus. He's a gentleman, and he never forces himself upon you. But the moment you become a child of God, the moment you believe, the Holy Spirit comes and res resides in you. Now, at that instantaneous moment, fruit starts to appear in your life. Do you remember when you first got saved? Do you remember that joy inside? Fruit of the Spirit. Do you remember that when you first got saved, that love that you had for that guy at work who was kind of smelly and kind of didn't treat you too well? That was the Holy Spirit swelling up inside you. You see, the fruit of the Spirit comes with the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And as we look at Scripture, we're going to see how the fruit of the Spirit are a byproduct of walking side by side with, with Jesus Christ. The fruit of the Spirit now is different than the gifts of the Spirit. Last week, I know Pastor Judah talked about the gifts of the Spirit, how some prophesy, some teach, some speak with other tongues with interpretation, some have the spirit of discernment, the gifts of the Spirit. And Scripture says that the Holy Spirit gives those, those gifts as he deems fit whether it be the, the situation or the circumstance that's going on in somebody's life or your life or how things are going, the, the situation that others might be in and you're there and there's a need for that gift. But we're not looking at the gifts of the Spirit today. We're going to be looking at the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is given to all who live the Spirit-led life and stay connected to Jesus. You know, I remember when I first moved to Plymouth, uh, not in the house we're in now, but when we moved to uh, up on the hill coming up Route 6, uh, we had a, we a two-family house that we first moved into. And probably a lot of you have had this uh, occurrence happen when you moved into your home. Uh, the welcome wagon showed up at our door. You know, and they welcome you to the neighborhood and they give you a fruit basket or something like that, right? So when we were welcomed into the neighborhood, we got a fruit basket, maybe an edible arrangement. I can't remember exactly what it was. But the fruit of the Spirit is pretty similar to that. When you're welcomed into the family of God, the Holy Ghost comes and welcomes you. And he gives you the fruit of the Spirit. Now, you know, there's been a lot of times I've heard people say, well, you know, I'm having trouble with love, or I'm having trouble with patience. And as if each of the fruit of the Spirit are separate fruits, and we can pick and choose. Do you ever have a, somebody who has a fruit salad at a, at a picnic or something, and you see that one guy who's pulling out all those grapes that you really wanted, and you're going in, and all you got left is cantaloupe at the bottom of that fruit salad. So it's not a fruit salad anymore, it's a cantaloupe salad. Well, you know, the, the gifts of the Spirit aren't, dispensations of individualism like the gifts of the spirit are but they're a package they're a fruit salad 
You're given all the gifts of the Spirit when the Holy Ghost resides in you. I'm sorry, not the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. So the welcome wagon kind of reminded me of that, as how when we come to Christ and the Holy Ghost comes and dwells within us, how we receive the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, and 23 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Now you see, he doesn't, the Holy Spirit produces these in our lives, the scripture says. It's not like, he doesn't ask us, well, what kind of fruit do you like, Ramey? You know, do you like bananas or do you like cherries or kumquats? What's your favorite fruit? The Holy Ghost produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And I say, well, hold up, Rame. You know, now, love, cool, that's cool. Joy, I love joy, man. I, I want to be happy all the time. I want joy in my life. But patience, well, I'm working on that, okay? But you see, the scripture says that all of these fruit can be evident in our lives as we walk close to Jesus Christ every day. We don't have to, we don't have to just uh, settle for, well, I got, I'm kind of getting better at loving people and my patience is getting a little bit better and, uh, you know, my faithfulness, uh, I've kind of wavered a little bit there and there. No, God says that these gifts or these fruit are, will, should be evident in our lives as the Holy Spirit takes lead in your life or leads you through life. See, the fruit is a byproduct of a tree, right? You don't see a fruit saying, oh, yeah, on this branch I want to have five apples and this one I want to have two. And, and he starts squeezing out an apple over here, right? No. A tree just is just a tree, man. I'm just out here being a tree, right? And that's what God asks us to be. Just be, just be a Christian. Just be a follower of Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. And boop, whoop, wait a second. There's some love over here. I love you, brother. Whoop, there's some joy. Man, I feel so good today. You see, all of these things are a byproduct of the Holy Ghost guiding your steps throughout life. Now, that doesn't mean that we're robots or we're being taken over by this force like some different occults do where they give over their body to things. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. The Holy Spirit won't go against our own will, but as we relinquish our will to God and we walk in the way that he makes, he makes straight for us and he clears for us, as we do that and as we follow his leading, he gives us all this fruit. Now, what's the reason for fruit? Does anybody know why a tree has fruit? It's not a trick question, guys. Well, there's two reasons why a tree has fruit, okay? One is so you can eat it, right? So it's, you, you can eat and you can partake of it. And the other one is it's to reproduce, right? So... No wonder the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Right? And that we as Christians, and as we allow the Holy Ghost to take hold of our lives, and as we relinquish our ways and our thoughts, and the fruit of the Holy Ghost is hanging in our lives, people will say, whoa, that's, that's a pretty good piece of fruit over there. And they'll check it out. And they'll taste of the Lord because of the fruit in our lives. And we will reproduce. Like I said, natural trees don't think about producing fruit. It just happens from getting sunlight and water. All fruit is produced this way. Now you might say, yeah, Rain, well, you know what? I've been a Christian 10 years. and Then why aren't all of these fruit of the Spirit in my life. I mean, if what you're saying is true, if, if with the Holy Ghost indwelling in me 
as scripture says, that when I accept Christ, he comes to reside in me, and he won't ever leave me, and he'll guide me into all truth. And why aren't I exhibiting all these fruits in my lives? Why do I have such a hard time with that tough person in my life? Why do I have such a hard time putting down the clicker to the TV? Why do I have such a hard time opening up my Bible? Well, when the fruit isn't evident in our lives, it's because of that battle that we talked about. Now, there's a battle coming up August 26th. I know all my, all my MMA fans out there, they know who I'm talking about. The McGregor and Mayweather fight, right? I'm sure you've heard about it. Um, that's, that battle is going to be unbelievable, but that battle is nothing compared to the battle that we go through between the flesh and the spirit each and every day of our lives. So why aren't we seeing these, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives more and in all different areas of our lives? Because of that battle. Remember the battle? Galatians 5.19 says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostilities, quarreling, Jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like that. Now, you could call those the flip side of the coin, the fruit of the flesh, you might say, right? Those are things that as we walk out on our own, and walk after our own desires. As it said in that scripture, it says, when you follow the desires, when you follow the desires, when we decide to not follow the Holy Ghost and allow him to lead us, that's where we get into trouble. Now, that doesn't mean we're not Christians or that we're going to hell because once we're, once we're the Lord's, it's just like my children will always be my children. You're the Lord's. But when we walk outside the covering and the leading of the Holy Spirit and for God's plan in our life, trouble comes. Things happen in our lives that no father would want for their children, especially our Heavenly Father, which the Bible says that all he wants is good and wonderful things for us. Things like we start getting into lustful pleasures, outbursts of anger, Selfish ambition where everything else comes second and I come first. So those things crop up when we go our own way. When we don't follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, these take hold of our lives. So you might be saying, wow, Rain, that's kind of a bleak picture. Well, what can I do? You know, kind of like what Christian was saying in... Uh, Pilgrim's Progress, he says, oh, what can I do to escape this wrath to come? What can I do to live a victorious life in Jesus? When we're not seeing the fruit of the Spirit working in our lives, it's usually a positional problem. What I mean by that is it's, it's usually our location. Because if you're not walking side by side with God, guess who moved? It wasn't him. Romans 13, verse 13 and 14 says, Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in darkness, in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness, or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living, or in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, Clothe yourselves with the presence of the Lord Jesus. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. See, those are the things that get us in trouble. When we don't clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ, when we don't walk hand in hand with the Comforter, the one who's here, Jesus said, hey, when I go, I'm going because I'm going to be sending you the Comforter. I'm sending you somebody who's going to be with you till I come back for you. And he's going to guide you into all truth. So no matter where you go, look to him. Forget about Google. 
The Holy Ghost will tell you what the true answer is and show you the real way and your, and your Google Maps and all that. The Holy Ghost knows the way. John 15, 5. Now this is a scripture that I think if we, we had studied this in uh, Thrive Kids a few months back and we, had a, we brought a vine in. Let me read the scripture and it says, Yes, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If you want the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, like I said, it's a positional thing. You can't expect the fruit of the Spirit and a victorious life in Christ if you're not following Christ. And if you're not allowing him to lead, but he says, hey, stay in me and I will be with you and you will bear fruit. He says, but outside of him, we can do nothing. Who'd want to be outside Jesus Christ after tasting of that? So you're saying, okay, Rain, well, you say I must stay connected with Jesus. Stay close to him. How do I do it? There's a few ways we can do it. Come to church. Hear the word preached. Talk to God. Talk to him in prayer. Build that relationship just like you have with your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend or significant other or your kids. Build that relationship through prayer. Talk. And it doesn't mean down on your knees or saying, you know, saying a, a rote prayer. Just talk to him like you'd talk to your your regular father, or someone you love. Read the Word of God. Read the Bible every day. If you want to know more about God, you want to stay in His Word, you want, you want to stay with Him and have Him lead you, read His Word. And then hang out with Christians. You know, against the popular belief, Christians are kind of cool. Right? Amen, right? I mean, I hang out with a couple cool Christian dudes uh, during the week. <laughs> Lenny, right? Okay, and a couple other guys. My buddy Bryson. <laughs> so, hang out with Christians. You know, that way when you do it into trouble, when you have problems, when you feel like you can't make it, you got another brother or sister to pick you up and say, hey, you can do this. I've been through that. I've been there. Here, read this. Here's a word that the Lord, you know, that, that the Lord has for you. Read this scripture. Or come on, we've got a fellowship or a Bible study or a, or a prayer hike that we're doing. Come on out and fellowship and walk with the Lord. Now, I got a story for you guys. And you guys want to hear a story? All right. This is about the extent of my gardening <laughs> expertise here, right? Well, about last Father's Day, I think it was, right? Last Father's Day, I was saying, we had, my wife and I had been to some friend's house, and they had these beautiful fig trees, and they were bearing these fruit. I said, man, I want a fig tree. I know I can do it. I know I can grow some great figs and make some homemade fig newtons and put some fig spread on something. And man, and I got this for Father's Day. I opened it up. I said, yeah. And my, my oldest son gave me two half barrels to put them in. I said, oh, these are going to look so beautiful when they're flowering and this and that. Midsummer, oh, these things were beautiful. They had little buds. They had, the first year, they had some little figs on them about this big. And I knew the first year, you know, it's a, it's a baby tree. It's not going to, it's producing fruit and it had leaves and everything. I'm saying, next year, I'm going to have so many figs. I'm going to go to the farmer's market and sell my figs. <laughs> well, fall came and Ramey said, yeah, well, what am I going to do with these fig trees? You know, I read, the, I read the thing on it and it said, you know, they don't leave these in the snow or whatever. <laughs> it, gave you, it gave you the, uh, you know how it has that map of the United States. This is you. This, this tree does not go with you up here. And so 
my wife says, well, you know, you should really bring them in and we got to put them somewhere where they're going to get light and, you know, put them up in, we have this breakfast nook where there's windows all the way around. She goes, oh, we can put them in there and they'll get light and I'll take care of them. I said, no, nah, don't worry about it. I said, I'll put them, I said, I'll, I'll bring them up there later. So I bring them in and I bring them into my, any of you guys who've been to my house for the baptism or anything, you know, I have that, that walkout, uh, walkout apartment and I brought them in from the patio into the apartment and I, I was in a rush, I guess. I stuck them in this back room, all right? That's where he stood. So this tree stood there until April, May maybe. And I'm going down there looking for something to sell on eBay. And I'm digging through the stuff. And I look over there and this guy's looking at me. And I said, what? So I had two of them as a matter of fact. And I bring them upstairs. And I said to my wife, I'm throwing these things out. I said, this thing's not growing. What's going on? She goes, Wait, where'd you have that thing? Of course it's not growing. Did you, did you feed it this summer or this winter? Did, what'd you do with it? It's been hidden in a closet. I said, I'm throwing them out. She goes, hold on, hold on. She goes, let me take care of them. So she put this one and the other one out on our patio, you know. Now, let me show you the other one. Like I said, me, they were, were going to be in the dumpster. So, you can see who has the green thumb. But this was, when I had them both, they were twins. They both looked the same. They looked like there was no life in them at all. But my wife took them, and she gave it a little miracle grow, and with her green thumb, if you guys have been to my house, or if you're going to come for the baptism, you'll see all of her gardens that she has. And she worked on it and nurtured it, and... About a week later, I'm looking, and there's this little thing growing in here. I'm ready to pull it out. I said, that's a weed growing in there. I said, why don't we just throw that thing out? She goes, no. That tree is coming back. I said, yeah, right, whatever. So then I went along my way, and then I'm going out, and I'm moving this thing. It's in my way. I'm moving it around. A week goes by. A week goes by. And before you know it, it's got this growth that's bigger than, if you can see, you see the old growth here? How it's dead? Well, this is a new growth that came up from the root, and it's right here. And there's new life to this plant that once was dead. My wife was able to give it new hope and new life. Kind of reminds me of a parable that Jesus talked about. About this garden, you know. Now, this guy owned his garden, and he had all these trees in it, and fig trees and plants and everything, and he's walking through the garden one day, and, and he sees this one tree, and he recognizes, he says, he's got his gardener with him, and he says, see this tree? Man, I've been looking at this tree, I've been, I put this tree in the ground because I expected it to produce some fruit. Next time I come by here, I want that tree ripped down. And in the fire. I don't want to see that tree again. It hasn't produced anything since it's been there. All it is doing is, is taking up my resources. I could have a tree right there that's going to produce all kinds of fruit, all kinds of figs, enough that, could, that I could either sell or I could eat myself. Get rid of it. And the gardener says, well, boss, hold on a second. He goes, give me a little time. Give me three years, as a matter of fact. Let me nurture it. Let me prune it. Let me dig around it. Let me work on that plant, on that tree, and see. And in three years, if it doesn't bear fruit, then okay. Then we'll tear it down. Jesus Christ came to earth for each and every one of us. We were this tree dead, the world wanted to throw us away, wanted to put us in the dumpster, gave up on us, but Jesus came to earth, and his public ministry was three years, and during that time, he cultivated, and he worked the soil, and he ministered to those around, and through his ministry, he brings newness of life. And he's given us the Holy Ghost and the fruit of the Spirit so that we can live in newness of life and walk in him. 
Psalm 1 talks about the blessed man. And here's what Psalm 1, verse 1 through 3 says. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join with mar- mockers, but they delight in the, in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They're like trees planted along the river, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves will never wither, and they prosper in all they do. God has given us the opportunities to walk a victorious life. He's given us all of the tools that we need to have love in our lives, to have joy in our lives, to have compassion, have patience, endurance, long-suffering. He's given us the Holy Spirit As we allow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to guide us, and as we remember where we are positionally with our GPS, our God positioning system, as we get closer to Him, watch the dead tree come back to life. That fear that's in your life, those things that are going on that you thought, you know what, it's not worth it anymore, Rain. I've tried this thing called Christianity. You know, I'm hanging on by a thread. Draw closer to Jesus. The closer you are to Him, the stronger you will be. The closer you you are to Him, the more victorious you'll be in your walk. And the more the Holy Spirit will make himself manifest in your life. Let Jesus be that gardener in your life. Let him break up that hardened ground in your heart. And you know, it might have been, might been some time since you felt that the Lord has used you. wants to use each and every one of us to be that tree that gives the fruit to those that will multiply, that they'll taste and see, and then then more will come to know Jesus Christ. And more, and more. Have you ever looked at an apple? Now, I did a little research on an apple. In an apple, there's usually five sections in the core. Out of one apple, you can get an orchard. us to be fruitful and multiply. Now as the band is playing, if any of you have anything that you're struggling with right now, anything that you're not sure you can cope with anymore, bring it to Jesus. Now you might say, Rain, well, how does this have anything to do with the fruit of the Spirit? Relationship to Christ Jesus to, and your positional relationship to where you are has everything to do with the fruit of the Spirit in your life. So if you want to feel those in your lives, get closer to Jesus today. Now we have a picnic going on outside after service, but I'm going to close in prayer and um, we have some people who'd like to pray with you. If you have something you'd like to pray us to pray with you about, come on up and we'll have some people over here who are going to pray with you. They want to pray with you. They want to bear your burdens with you. So let's just close our eyes and uh, I'll close us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, for your promises and for your watch care over each and every one of us, Lord. Oh, Father, we know how much you care for us, Lord. Lord, I pray that No one would leave here today with a burden that could be left at the cross. Lord, that no one would leave here defeated and discouraged, Lord, when there's victory to be had at the foot of the cross. 
Lord, I pray today that people would turn in the opposite direction and come running to Jesus. That they would stay close by your side where there is mercy and where there is grace and forgiveness and where there is protection from the storm. Lord, I just pray that you bless the rest of this day and Lord, that you just help us to enjoy each other's company and that new friendships and new members of our family would be found today, Lord, during our time of fellowship. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.